Hi, it's Jeremiah. Today we're going to talk about Vagrant. If you've done any PHP development, you've almost certainly heard about Vagrant. So first of all, Vagrant is a piece of software that you run and its job is to orchestrate the interaction between the host machine, which is your physical laptop or development machine, and a guest machine, which is a virtual machine running on one of a number of possible providers. There's a free one provided by Oracle called VirtualBox. You can think of your provider as the facsimile of the physical hardware. The next thing you need is an operating system. HashiCorp themselves, who are the makers of Vagrant, provide a resource called Atlas. Atlas is to Vagrant as Packagist is to Composer. If you're familiar with Composer, you're probably familiar with Packagist, and you'll know that it's a locator website for Git repositories. Atlas serves a similar function for Vagrant images. So let's pause here and actually go over to look at a project that has a Vagrant file in it and talk a little bit about the mechanics of a Vagrant file. All that a project requires is you need to have Vagrant installed, you need to have a VM provider such as VirtualBox, and you need to have an image to install on that box. The way that it's all glued together, if you have a file named Vagrant file in your project root that is formatted correctly, you can go in the command line and write Vagrant up and it will boot your virtual machine. This is a really interesting example right here because it's totally self-contained within this Vagrant file. So you can see that what's being done here is they've defined a shell script using HereDoc notation, which simply does a few additional setup tasks after the box image that they've specified right here has been downloaded. Let's go back over here to the discovery site, and actually we can see that they are specifying one of these very popular box images. Switching back to the script, we can see that after specifying a given box, a few basic things about networking, then what they do here is execute what's called an inline shell provisioner. So basically all that's saying is that this variable will be executed as an inline shell script, and that variable is defined right here as simply a series of very basic shell commands. Unfortunately, this isn't a very built out machine. It's actually very common that in the real world, when you're not talking about just a demo file, that you wanna have a bit more. Still, that being said, what has to happen here is a fairly time consuming process the first time you run Vagrant up. In the interest of time, I'm not running it in front of you. It has to do quite a number of things, which include downloading a bunch of stuff and configuring the machine for the first time. Here at Saliant, we like to install a lot of things. We have a pretty customized setup, which includes a lot of provisioning and only a small portion of which differs from project to project. What we've done is we've created a repository for our base box, which I'll just switch over to. In our base box, we tell it to do quite a number of things. Vagrant can execute provisioners from as simple as that shell provisioner we looked at in the Zen Skeleton app, right on through to pretty much all of the major automation tools. So using Puppet, in our case, we are installing Node, we're installing NPM, we're installing Bower, we're installing many, many things. Then we carry on and we actually do run additional shell provisioners and all of this stuff is the Vagrant project that we always want. They're gonna be common to every project. So, okay, it's nice that we've standardized and automated that. The problem is if you always start with the Precise64 image, then you're always downloading the Precise64 image, which is a plain vanilla machine, and you're running all this provisioning, which takes a pretty long time. I mean, this machine was taking easily 10 minutes or longer just to download all the defaults. So what we've done is we've taken advantage of the Atlas service and we have created our own box. So this one that I'm showing you, we're on version five of this image. What happens here is when we specify that, so we'll switch to another project. So here's the Vagrant file in a typical project where our box definition is specified as Salian starter box. Now that's gonna look on Atlas for that specific machine image and it's gonna directly download this pre-provisioned box, which saves us a lot of coffee drinking. The first time we up a project, it still takes some time because there's still some project specific provisioning that's still gonna have to happen. But the virtue of having a pre-provisioned box is that all of the Vagrant configuration management that we do that's project specific becomes much simpler. It only involves things like deploying config files and stuff like that. So let's run a timer while we bring up the base box. The first thing it does is download the plain vanilla and then after doing that, it's going to run through and run all the provisioners that would normally have to run every time if we hadn't bundled them together into our own base box. 
And through the magic of editing, we'll jump to the end of this build and show you how long it takes. Up until this point, it's only been updating plugins. Now it's running apt-get on the OS itself. Installing curl, installing git, stop the clock here. The machine is there. So about, so let's just say uh, just under 10 minutes to get to the point where you have a set up base box that's not just a plain vanilla. Next, let's bring up a project where we've provisioned the base box that we just built, but all it's gonna have to do is download it in that pre-provisioned state. Remember that one took about nine and a half to 10 minutes to get to the point where the box was ready. And there we have it, 100% in about a minute and 15 seconds instead of nine and a half minutes. Three minutes and 45 seconds. Now a minute and 15 of that, if you recall, was downloading the base box. So if we say that's two and a half minutes of app specific provisioning on top of the nine and a half minutes that it took to originally create the base box, you can extrapolate that the entire process took 12 or more minutes to come up the first time when we were doing it all inside the application project. Couple that with the fact that then also all of your provisioning scripts and infrastructure for the project are much more complicated because you need to do all that machine provisioning inside your project. There is a huge advantage to breaking off all that aspect of the project, which is going to be the same every time and building out your own base box. That's just how you want it. And then all you have to do is provision your application. I hope you enjoy learning a little bit more about Atlas on your own, and I hope you can take advantage of it in your development process. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe to Salian TV.